Well, thank you very much, uh, Jerome, for the introduction, kind introduction, and thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to share with you today a little bit of our experience and our journey in uh, introducing digital twin technology in the in-flight catering environment, very specifically. So, already, as, uh, as already was mentioned, you know, SATS is, uh, is the leading in-flight caterer and uh, ground handler of uh, Asia. We call ourselves through feeding and connecting Asia as our objective. And uh, the chances are that actually that you've been traveling around in the region intensively, most of you, and uh, that you've had the opportunity to taste our product. Hopefully, it was a good experience. Um, and definitely, we are uh, working very hard to actually to make that experience a better one. But as you know, really, the food business is a very competitive one. That's one, actually, that really pushes us to constantly innovate. And in this context of a need of innovation is how we really tackle the opportunity through Digital Twin. So let me share with you a little bit more about uh, how we came to this journey, uh, which we started really a couple of years ago for Digital Twin in 2017. And some of the problems that we were trying to solve in our environment. If you're a little bit familiar with, uh, with uh, in-flight catering, you know that we're operating in a very constrained environment. Airports are getting busier and busier, but we don't necessarily having more available uh, capacity or space to produce for the increasing number of travelers that we're seeing. At the same time, um, in-flight catering, the way that we have been managing for many years, is, uh, or the product we produce, is a freshly produced product. Pretty much we produce uh, just-in-time meals in high quantities with a high degree of variations in the actual type of meals we produce because every airline wants to make their own differentiation. So the problem statement that we're having here as a starting point is uh, we have a complex production that has to happen real time in a very constrained environment. So I think you could say this is a perfect example of why digital twin technology could really help solve this, this, uh, this problem. At the same time, um, when you are in the culinary business, and that's part of what we, or DNA is standing from, we're also dealing with chefs, chefs who create and, and like to drive the process of creation as any good chef wants to do in the world. So also we have then the challenge of how do we capture all of this accumulated know-how in recipes, in cooking processes, so that on the one hand we can, we can continue to cater for that culinary excellence, while at the same time we're really able to manage consistency and we can manage scale as we produce. So the know-how management, uh, the know-how that has been in the heads and good practices of our chefs and our production officers is something that for many years has stayed in an analog form, be it in process blueprints, in recipes, in just like practices that are passed from chef to chef, so to say, almost like from ear to mouth. So, of course, we are very proud of that. We're, we're proud of our, our secret recipes, but we don't want them to be so secret that we cannot really sustain them. So what we want to achieve really is uh, with Digital Twin is to create a platform uh, through Digital Twin, be able to capture all of those best practices, this wealth of know-how, and make it a tangible asset through IP. And we want really to have through that not only consistency in the way we deliver to our customers delicious foods, but also create enterprise value through goodwill that becomes really something that is more tangible, still being intangible, it's a, more, more tangi a lot more tangible. And when we open up a new kitchen, as we expand around the world with our products and services, we're able really to quickly, through the digital assets, we can move, mobilize, and implement those new in-flight kitchens or other kitchens that we are also opening up around the world which are not in-flight ones. So in addition to that, we think we all take our responsibility in making sustainable, you know, uh, in this case, uh, you know, aviation industry. So we take very seriously our responsibilities and sustainability. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how what we're doing with Digital Twin addresses our sustainability objectives. So what are the challenges as we start that we are facing? So I will describe them in, um, with, with three main blocks. The first one is for most of the enterprises, even though you see all of the wealth of opportunities with digital, but we are not really digital at the starting point. So really starting with the data normalization, data capturing, governance on data, and being able to connect data is a huge challenge for any business. 
and we were not different from most businesses in that respect. So it took us a long time, actually, to be able really to gather all of the data points, all of the specifications of our processes, all of the detailed designs that we had in blueprints, transform them into digital data assets. But of course, you know, then uh, when you're asking for that, then you need to realize that you have a number of people who have been working in an analog environment and for which these changes may not necessarily always be seen as an opportunity. And very often you have a resistance for this change. And actually, if you implement the technology, if you implement the data assets or you manage to collect them, but you're not able really to get the people on board to see that this is going to become an opportunity. And you'll see, like, uh, for some people, like a chef who, who's had a lot of freedom to do and, and make things happen in their own way, putting those detailed processes and uh, specific, uh, really, details on, on how to produce their, 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 their meals is not necessarily always seen as an opportunity. So change management definitely is a second huge challenge. But technology without really, uh, that's here the CDO speaking, you know, technology really, it's not really the end point of arrival. It's a means to an end point. And without the change management and the adoption of technology throughout the business process, it becomes completely sterile. Or at least it doesn't deliver the value that you are trying to really, uh, that you're aiming at since you're starting these projects. The third element, of course, as a challenge is how you demonstrate that this significant change and this significant investment and this process that takes you really to, uh, really to, to transform is going to deliver value. And how this value really speaks to not only really our sustainability objectives, but also to the specific objectives we have from a CFO perspective and from an operations uh, efficiency perspective. So, how, will we, how have we really moved with, uh, with this project so far? So we started this project, I'm going to just click through. Because so we started this project in three phases. The first phase, uh, we started with the implementation with, uh, with Dalmia, and we implemented the, um, you know, the, the modeling, the virtual kitchen, and uh, where we really started to model for an extension of our new kitchen. We call it C2+, the extension of one of our airport kitchens. We want to simulate what is the, the ideal layout and what are the equipments and how we would really use the different, I would say, uh, man, um, power and equipment resources in, in, in an optimum way for us really to, oh, to be able to to start to produce um, um, in a batch mode that we had not been producing in the past for certain aspects of our production. So this has been fully implemented. This is actually operational. And uh, we launched, and I'm going to share with you in a minute a video, which, which was the launch that we did of this uh, virtual model with our, our uh, minister in Singapore of Industry and Transport. Um, the second phase of this has been really the, and this is where we are still in, in, in pilot mode, is the implementation of the um, uh, through the digital uh, uh, model, we really move on really into, into building up some of the optimization modeling, and that's where we're bringing in autons into the uh, capabilities of seeing how we can then do ongoing optimization actually to do our production planning. And that's where we're starting to run the simulations of how, wa what type of organization and batch sizes and how t what type of variations are the optimum ones depending on the seasonal changes that we're having or the changes that we're doing in moving some of uh, the airlines from one type of uh, you know, kitchen to another kitchen. We're having three kitchens at the airport. The final stage, and you've been hearing about it, is uh, where we're not yet there, um, but we're aiming at, is where actually we're going to then uh, inject in our different equipments and uh, processes, uh, you know, IoT, and we, wanna, we want to capture real time how actually your models have delivered or are delivering real time. And we're going we're gonna to really take all of that data backwards to optimize and definitely enter into this virtuous circle of, um, of improving uh, our modeling and actually our decision making process. However, this is a very heavy pro step for us to take. A lot of our equipment is not state of the art. And we really need to modernize a number of our equipments with those sensors. Second, very important, cybersecurity is a concern. As a, CIO, as a CDO in, in, my, in, my, in my role, I also cover cybersecurity. And definitely, the operating environments very often have a lot of loopholes in their design. And actually, before closing those, it's very dangerous for us to connect our IT with our OT environments. So we're looking very carefully about identifying those. But definitely, this is the direction for us to take. OK, so I'm going to show you the video. Well, I should have shown you the video now. Um, maybe it comes later. Or not.
So uh, there are following the initial implementation in our kitchen, then we considered that we had uh, really an opportunity to further exploit this, um, these capabilities and uh, definitely the investment. So, so we went on and actually um, use, uh, have used it in different, in different contexts. Um, I, would, I would say, you know, just summarize it here, like uh, there's three main aspects that we are trying to achieve with the technology in different environments. Um, cost avoidance. So we've used, and this is a very real example and quite a recent one, we use the technology to actually, in, in the decision making for a new automation line, um, we use the technology to prove whether the productivity that was spec specified by, by the um, you know, manufacturer of that uh, line was accurate, and we, um, we came to the conclusion it wasn't. Um, it's a multi-million investment that we're going to make in this line, and actually we could see that 30% of the productivity that was being promised was not achievable. And uh, we could demonstrate that, and we use Digital Twin to demonstrate that to the actual manufacturer that, uh, of that production line. So that's a very real example that happened um, uh, recently. We've been able to generate new revenues opportunities because definitely Digital Twin in the case of our renewal of the agreement with, uh, with the Singaporean uh, uh, armed forces, uh, we also produce non-aviation food. Uh, the uh, armed forces of Singapore is one of our largest non-aviation clients. And we had a, a long-term agreement for renewal and we definitely uh, benefited from being able to model and demonstrate our capabilities in managing very complex, I would say, intense use of spaces uh, in, in the canteens uh, of our soldiers. And that was uh, one of the key elements for them to decide to work with us since they saw our capabilities and that our future-oriented uh, you know, investments. And finally, and very important, uh, uh, we're using Digital Twin really as a, as a means for us to test new operating models. We're moving gradually to food manufacturing, centralizing our kitchens, and being able really to produce centrally for the region. And through Digital Twin, we are able to model those new business models, this, those new operating models, in a way that we're able to qualify um, what is the optimum and if the actual overall operating model that we're trying to really to develop across the region is going to be successful. So it's definitely a very important aspect of our strategic thinking and conceptualization of how we'll be operating those new business diversifications that we're considering as part of our strategy. In addition to that, we've been able really to create a momentum through Digital Twin because it, it, it helps us put forward to our employees a proposition. And that's not just for Digital Twin, this is for our digital transformation. I think with digital transformation, we're aiming to provide to our employees a path that enables their job for the jobs to be more sustainable, to acquire new skills, and to make this path really a, um, a one that actually is oriented towards the skills and needs that the enterprise has for the future. This is a huge advantage for us when it comes truly really to getting the adoption of our digital strategy uh, being also from the floor, from the bottom, from the employees, but also from the unions. So we've uh, we showcased uh, a few of our uh, employees which have moved from being like a in this case, like uh, uh, designers uh, into or like uh, planners with Excel to really to digital planners or to actually you know 3D modelers, and actually this is um, these are the use cases, and we're trying to see as much as possible with our KPIs of these projects not only what is the return we're having on profit or sustainability, but also what is the contribution to transformation of job redesigns and business opportunities also for our employees. And finally, so I would say we are definitely very taking very serious our, 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 our sustainability goals uh, with our planet, of course, with our people, and of course, with the profits. We call it really uh, slightly different, but we're definitely aiming at the same things. And basically, we're seeing that with, uh, with the implementation of Digital Twin, we're creating uh, the opportunities for us really to optimize, of course, on how we utilize resources. Um, being a good citizen and using resources in an efficient way is very important. Likewise, really, how we're avoiding wastage and how we're actually able really to, through that, um, you know, contribute um, with an efficient use of materials. And definitely, we're looking for the ways that we can really continue to improve the career development of our employees and through that really make SADS a ready future company. So with that, I thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think this is, was very interesting to see, you know, uh, transformation journey perspective. And, and I, I, I particularly 
like the fact, you know, when we started this discussion about workforce of the future as part of sustainability and digital transformation, sometimes people were looking at us and said, workforce of the future, why, right? I think this is a great example because obviously at the core of what you do are your teams and we see now how the digital technology can enable them. So thank you so much. Um, Eric, is there any questions uh, that we see from the community? Um, okay, well, this one, I don't know whether we want to make uh, advertisement for a, a consulting company um, because they were asking you who, who supported you into that journey. So, so the yeah, system think. supported us very much, and actually, <laughs> I would I, I sh that's a cue to you, actually. But actually, I must say, we did work uh, very directly with the source systems because our objective was to, as much as possible, adopt internally the know-how. And actually, in this case, we didn't work with any integrators. We did it directly. All right. So, uh, so I have a question, you know. Um, w in those transformation projects, when we go and see clients of ours, I mean, there was always a question of who is leading that, right? It should that be business, but then we lack the IT side? Should that be IT, but then we, lo we lose the business credibility? How did you solve that problem? Um, I think you can just choose between the two, you need the two. I think any, I, I would say here in general, in digital transformation, I think uh, the IT or say the digital tower, if you call it, you know, is the one who's gonna come up with ideas and uh, needs to come with ideas that are relevant to the business. So I don't think any transformation is possible whether if the business doesn't see a problem to be solved with that technology or with that transformation you're proposing. At the same time, really, you know, you need to come with the ideation, you need to come really with the capabilities to not just, um, you know, to break the myth that actually technology is the pill you take and then you're completely just uh, changed, that they understand that technology in itself is a starting point, but there's a long journey which is change, and this requires to rethink processes, rethink the way we work, and that technology cannot do on its own without the business. So I think it's a 50-50 it's a equation, uh, and it takes two to tango in this case as well. All right. Okay, thank you so much, Albert. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you. for being there and sharing that experience with Thanks. us. Thanks.